these things up as a way for us to experience flat planes, simple geometric shapes, and how they can shift and move. And then when you start to add that kind of vision to your work, you try to get that same clarity. Now, the other thing it does, and I posted a thing by my name up there, you guys can go up and look at it before we start. It also provides you with a way of having a skeleton substructure to work from so that you're not working in absolute air, that you have some sort of physical foundation you can stand on to develop your idea rather than random. Random in abstract work has been very popular for a long time, uh, and, and the decorators love it. But the reality is that random has a limited reality, mainly because you're introduced into the 21st century where technology is developing and evolving and using ideas of random to create decorative abstractions by the carload. So the only place that you can sit is to get more substance in your work and more direct relationship between you and what you're doing and what you're taking from. So the factors that came out through Suzanne, through Picasso, through Hoffman, all these guys, was that you remove yourself from rendering and copying and you develop shape and movement to formulate a rhythm or an idea that has content because of the way you arrange it. Now, that's a long-winded thing that means this. You compose an abstraction just like you compose anything else. But instead of composing just a surface, you compose the foundation that feeds the surface. So the interlocking happens. So you just don't simply have a bright spot and a right spot. You have an actual movement and rhythm that you can relate to. Mm -hmm. The other thing, which I say in every lecture, because you hear it all the time, that somebody will say, I don't understand abstraction. Well, of course they don't understand it. It's the first time they saw it. Every abstraction is a new reality. It didn't exist before you did it. So they have no memory. They have a memory of an onion, a sun, a moon, a flower, but they do not have a memory of shapes in motion. So they have to live with it more than 10 minutes and actually allow it to be absorbed. Now, if you arrange these in spatial terms, you will have a bigger chance of reaching out and helping them become part of what you're trying to say. And I guarantee you, every, every one of you is saying something simple, complex, whatever, but each one of you has your own history that you bring into it. Now we'll start with the simple geometry. Now first thing they did was they set up almost an even plane, so I have to search for a break. What I did, this is my first plane, So the first thing you judge right away is as I'm working, are the negative spaces starting to move or are they all the same? If they're all the same, we got big problems. If they're not, that means you have tension right from the very beginning, which allows you to evolve later. Now, we're gonna let this thing dry and then I'm gonna do the watercolor. When the watercolor dries, we'll pull this around and collage it. So you get three demos in one shot. <laughs> Now I'm using the, the space that they arranged as an avenue of motion to both talk about the idea 
of the exercise and how the exercise can create a certain composition that will create, hopefully, a tension and a rhythm through the negative space. So, as these move, and they should move, there's one over on top of the other, protecting the two-dimensional space. We then turn around. Now pulling the white up in one place changes the position of the white in this area. As I start to elaborate and move areas behind and in front, I start to change the procedure of the idea. Theoretically. Every time I overlap, I push something behind. So pushing that white behind pulls that even further. So this idea of push-pull is really constrict contrast. And every artist uses it. I don't care what kind of painting you do. When you utilize the elements of controlled volume and placement of pieces against the surface and controlling the two-dimensional quality, all paintings speak the same language. They have a different aesthetic. They have a different purpose. But underneath, they should be able to see it and read it just like you'd read a book. Well, at least that's what they told me. <laughs> here, I overlap the white here, I don't let it go on top of the black on the right side. So behind and front, behind and front, that's the basic structure and rhythm. And that goes depending on how complex or how simple your work is. So what you're doing is you're trying to find a way to see the surface and the object on the surface as one in place of each other. It's like a rhythm, like a, like a really beautiful sound. Let's try. Well, I got to let the damn thing go. have been trying to work with gesture, but you don't use the gesture uh, as an action, you use it as a physical effect, and that always gets you in trouble. Right. So as this gets activated, everything should start to change just a little bit. Activity because there's more marks moving across the negative space. That's pretty simple. I'm working it a bit fast. What? Hey, Dave, what do you need? <laughs> we need. Be here. So as you notice, oh, I don't want to put that. I'm going to go see that. As you notice, I'm constantly pushing things slightly ahead or slightly under to establish the idea of control, shape, and movement. Now eventually, we're going to try to put black on top of white. Can't do that now because it's wet. Unless you want to see a lot of gray. We'll just use the collage to do that. Then you get two smokes with one stroke. Now, here, Clean this up. 
and you have light, you have shift to space, and you have to begin to move it. It's a simple exercise. There are a hundred different ways of doing it. This is the simplest one. So now you can do them anytime you want. You understand it. Okay. So we'll spin it around and I'll start the watercolor while this is drying. Set that over there. Be careful because they're not tight. Okay, I'll put them on the bottom. Just put them on there. Now, somebody want to have Daniel? Move this. And we'll flip it around. 